Hey everybody, welcome to the Truly Myrtle podcast. I'm Libby from Truly Myrtle and Wardrobe Toolbox and this is my weekly podcast all about, well mostly knitting, but sometimes a little bit of spinning and a little bit of just general chatter and sometimes occasionally some sewing, it should be a lot more, but I'm really not doing as much sewing as I would like. Anyway, welcome and it's lovely to have you with me. It is pouring with rain. I've got changed three times already today because I started in this top and then I got too hot and then I put on my little um, hot pink uh, Adira top, which I love with my little navy thing underneath. And then it just started pouring with rain and it got really cold again. So now I'm back in my, uh, I just really fancied wearing this jersey today. This is my uh, floozy too. Hey Maureen, nice to see you. Right, I'm going to pull you a little bit closer so I can see you better because I'm just, I need new glasses I think. I'm going, I'm going even more blind as I get older and I just, um, I desperately need some new glasses. So, lovely to see you Maureen. I suppose you've been out for your walk and everything. I didn't make mine today. But uh, anyway, I'm home. I was off last week away. My daughter, I told you, I think one of my kids had some surgery. Hey, hand waving. Uh, oh, nice to see you Lynn. Um, and she's doing really well and it went a bit more smoothly than they were anticipating thank goodness and I've left her to recover she's doing nicely so now she just facetimes me and tells me how she's up to, what she's up to so that's a relief and I'm home good and back to my knitting and I have been knitting oh I'll show you next week because I've got some other things to talk about today I've been knitting like a bomb so um I've just just about finished my little uh, ginger bliss cardigan I I cannot wait to uh, get that out to you all it's going to be a lovely little knit and um anyway there's lots of things so I'll, I'm just going to do it one at a time today uh hi Sally nice to see you in the UK now for those of you, you you're well trained uh for those of you who are calling in from Facebook because this video goes out live to YouTube and Facebook for those of you calling in from Facebook just pop your name in your comment so I know who you are YouTube people I can see you so Sally says hi from Facebook uh hi Barbara you're home on leave you're building up to your retirement at the end of April Barbara I didn't realize I'm going to be seeing Barbara soon because I'm off to uh, Christchurch not next week it's Easter on tomorrow isn't it good Friday's tomorrow next week I'm home and then the week after I will be able to do the podcast in the morning but then I'm off to Christchurch for a new show called Knit and Gather and I'm teaching over the weekend and then um, I'll bring some patterns I'll bring some I, I'm limited by how much I can put in my suitcase which you know when I fill it with samples it gets a little bit heavy so anyway I'll um I'll bring some and I'm so I'm so looking forward to it I was actually saying to Mr Myrtle last night I said it's very serious it's very serious we're in a very serious situation where I have to uh, really build up my stash again because I've used a lot and I'm coming around to choose things for new designs and I'm thinking um I have got yarn I have got some yarn but I've got a bunch of yarn that is not that you can't get hold of anymore and so it would be nice to, for me as well to try new yarn and get some new stuff out to you so I said it's very serious I've I'm going to have a budget uh and I'm going to stock up on uh some wool when I'm away and I'm going to try and buy some from around the place as well so uh yes I'm so looking forward to that I can't tell you uh hi Tracy nice to see the sunshine from northern New South Wales. Oh, it's not sunshine today. Here, Tracy. It's although it's fighting. It's fighting to get through the clouds. Hi, Kim. Nice to see you. You've had rain this morning. Yeah. Well, it's just started, Maureen. It was a bit hot, and um, that's why I got changed. And then now I'm changed back. And then now I'm already starting to feel a bit warm. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh yes, I'm home. Yes, thank you, Beck. Uh, hi, Ruth. Nice to see you. Hi from Hamburg, not your usual Corn Cornwall. Oh, Bronwyn, how exciting. You're visiting friends. I've brought yarn here. Yay, yay, Bronwyn, make the most of it. I, it's so much fun buying yarn when you're traveling, isn't it? Because, oh, it's just such a good excuse anyway to buy more yarn when you're traveling. Have fun, Bronwyn. Uh, Lynn's been for a walk and a swim already. Oh my gosh, Lynn, good on you. Uh, it's cold and windy in Combolton. Yay, so, um, there's a whole bunch of you. There's so many of you here. I can't say hello to you all. Yes, Ginger Blisses. That's some of my stash behind me. I've got tubs of things as well. I've got a bunch of, I've got some tubs. I've got yarn all over the show, but um, I have sort of 
yarn that is old. I've got really old yarn. And in my best dreams, I would just make things with whatever because I love teaching you about yarn. And we're actually going to talk about that today. Um, and I love talking about how to substitute yarn and, and how to know what to expect when you're picking up a, a different skein or a different ball of yarn that's called for in the pattern. And how do you know what's gonna, how it's going to turn out? Or how do you create an image in your head and bring it to life by choosing yarn? So I, I, and I do love the idea of using all sorts of yarn for that. But uh, I also like to use stuff that's out there now and to support businesses that are are around now and um just to try new things because there's always new and exciting things coming so i'm very very conflicted about that whole thing so as a as a consequence i have uh, rather a lot of yarn uh yes i'm going to choose beautiful yarn down there i can't wait i saw the list of traders yesterday and i thought oh yes i've already had some ideas (laughs) that's really good oh it's overcast and chilly and the sound says bernadette Oh, and Terry said she said four seasons in one day, but you managed to walk without getting wet. Well, that is a is a bit of a, a that's a bit of a coup actually, isn't it? Because my sneakers, when it's raining, I just get wet socks through my shoes, which is a pain. Oh yay! Kim says I'm frogging the sleeves of my wayfarer to make them slightly lar- larger. I love the sweater and yarn. Oh, I heard something the other day. So Christine, now some of you knew met Christine at Knit August Nights. Christine, if you were in my class or floating around, you may have seen the beautiful, beautiful dress that she created um, for her daughter's wedding. It was utterly stunning, utterly, utterly stunning. Anyway, she said to me she used Wayfarer as the bodice for the top, as sort of the, the blueprint for the top. And um, but she and then she had added a skirt to the bottom, but she changed it up a little bit. But that was kind of her blueprint for the top. So she wanted to show me. It, she used this dark, sort of ink navy, beautiful like French navy yarn held with mohair. Uh, and she in the sleeves instead of doing slim sleeves, she'd done a, a full sleeve that sort of gathered in. So it was quite a puff sort of sleeve that gathered in. And you just imagine it in that soft with the mohair. Had the nice little uh, set in sleeve of the top and then she had around the neck, she hadn't done any finishing with the knitting, uh, she'd got some old, I think it was rabbit um, that she had and she had put it around the neck so it had this sort of dark, already we had a lot of dark and fluff going on in the dress uh, and then it had this sort of rabbit around the neck and then it went through to a skirt and she's tall and you know she looks amazing uh, and then went through to the skirt and it sort of, it just fit it went out at the bottom. I make it. I'm making it sound a little more ploofy than it is. It was just ooze. It was. It was absolutely the most divine knitted dress I think I've seen. And uh, anyway, she wrote to me the other day because she's in the UK at the moment uh, and on an extended trip. And they're staying near Oxford, and she's going to a yarn festival. She she will have already been. She was off to a yarn festival, and uh, she was entering her dress and they had a catwalk catwalk thing and so she was entering herself and her dress she hadn't done anything like this before and so she was going to from what I understand walk the catwalk in this absolutely incredible dress so that is a good example of having an idea in your head using patterns as blueprints and not rules they're just loose recipes and then taking different yarn and different ideas and really turning it into something else so I was it just was amazing. So yes, Kim, uh, you prompted me to think about that. Uh, someone said, I didn't need any more yarn, but of course I bought more in the big recent sale. I stocked up on Truly Myrtle yarn, of course. Yes, well, I talked to Marie yesterday from Skeins, and she said there isn't a lot of yours left, actually. Uh, a lot of it's gone. I think there is a bit more sport left than DK. She said DK was just a big seller this time, which I thought was really interesting because a lot of you tell me you want to wear fingering I I also like wearing sport I know a lot of you do too but but DK seems to be the thing that people are buying which is interesting to me so we'll think about that uh Susan says I'm packing up some wallies for my trip to Amsterdam Belgium and France next week I've heard it's quite cold at the moment oh my gosh I'm so envious how fantastic yes the dress was beautiful okay so a couple of things I wanted to tell you today one If you are thinking about joining Wardrobe Toolbox, today is the last day that you can do that. I'll wake up tomorrow morning and turn off the doors because 
uh, I want everybody to know that it's midnight it's midnight to, on this day, the 28th of March. So this is the day to join if you want to join. You can join month by month. So you can just join for one month and then see if you like it. Or you can get a discount and join for the whole six month season. I'd say most people that are joining at the moment are joining for the six month season. So it's a good deal to do that. And it's really, really fun. I'm excited about the next uh, season and all the content I'm bringing you. So uh, it'll be good, I think. And anyway, the first pattern is already pretty gorgeous. And uh, my testers are making some amazing, amazing samples of it. So uh, that comes out on Monday. If you join today, you can come and join in the uh, lounge, like our community where you chat. You will have an invitation to our knit night on Saturday this week, my time. It's the only one that's not recorded, uh, but if it usually goes on for a couple of hours, hour and a half to two hours. So if even if you come in late, that's fine. That'll be on Saturday morning, my time, 10 o'clock. And then the new season will start on Easter Monday, actually, this time, because it starts on the 1st of April. We always start on the first full week of a month, and so that just happens to be the 1st of April. I promise you it won't be a trick. It will be real. It's, uh, it won't be a, a, a 1st of April, you know, April Fool's. You'll get an email in your inbox, which will have a, a links to a new pattern, a lesson that I think you'll enjoy, and uh, all other things just to tell you what's happening for the month. So today is the day to join you can just go to wardropetoolbox.com and you can sign up there so I wanted to remind you about that because I know especially you Kiwis you always do things at the last minute it's so fascinating watching <laughs> watching the buying habits of different countries okay I think um, I wanted to talk to you today about yarn just a little bit about yarn and this is the kind of thing we talk about inside wardrobe toolbox so i thought it would give you a flavor of some of the stuff that we cover and the kind of discussions that we have so i'm going to fly through it but uh, it'll give you a sense of what we do cover there was a question the other day in the hangout i think it was in the hangout mm. it was and um somebody wanted to knit gingerbread which is this jumper here uh gingerbread jumper which i put out years ago now long time I, I don't even know how many years i'm gonna guess five or six years ago and um she wanted to knit it but the yarn is no longer available and she was wondering what do i do and the funny thing is actually i was just looking this morning uh, at uh, a website in the u.s some beautiful yarn and i thought oh that would make a gorgeous cardigan I think I might grab some of that and I put it in my cart and then the shipping came up and it was a hundred and eighty five dollars New Zealand dollars shipping shipping it was more than the yarn and I thought oh flip <laughs> I'm not gonna buy that after all I'll find another way to get it uh, if I'm gonna use that one so there, there are always cases where either the yarn isn't around and this yarn here, which is a black, was a blacker yarn, it is, it's not going to come out as beautifully on screen as it is in real life. It glows, this yarn. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's quite rusticy feeling. It's quite a nice woolly yarn. It's very warm to wear. This is from Blacker. It's, a, it's Tamar yarn. It was out years ago. And I'm going to read you the description of it because sometimes that helps us when we're trying to think how to um, replace it with something else if we want the same look or it also helps you understand what that yarn is going to do sometimes you'll get information like this so she wanted to knit gingerbread and the yarn isn't around <clears throat> now I know part of it will be the stunning color because the color is it is just knockout it's a lovely acid green so that might be hard to find again but so you will have to compromise there will be little compromises that you'll make uh, in order to make something kind of the same as what you see in the pattern if that's what you want to do um <clears throat> i've got a cough all right so i actually printed off uh from ravelry what they said about tamar this is a dk yarn from blacker <clears throat> it's a uk company it's uh got 220 meters in 100 grams so what does that tell us first uh, it's a it's a definitely a dk uh, but it's 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 so it's 220 meters or 241 yards. But it's a, it's an ever so slight DK. It's an ever so light DK than we might find uh, with our standard 200 meters per 100 grams, which is often we find in a New Zealand style DK. So this might remind me a little bit more of a US DK because they're a little bit lighter. 
So that's something. It's just all like you're playing detective when you're coming into this. This is how they describe it. Tamar is a luster blend yarn with fluid sheen reminiscent of flowing water and the river which gives this blend its name. It's this luxurious luster yarn has been worsted spun Okay, there's lots of clues already to enhance the fibers inherent drape and shine. So there's so many words in there. If we can just put, cl clasp onto some of them, then we can hear what this is going to do when we knit it up. It's got a fluid sheen. Remember how I told you it had this, it just glows. It really does have a glow to it. That's its fluid sheen, right? Um, it has luxurious, luxurious luster yarn. So that's it just saying it again. It's been worsted spun. So worsted spun is where all the fibers, we talk about this, we've had some amazing masterclasses inside Wardrobe Toolbox actually about this, and they're all available for you to watch. Worsted spun are where the fibers are all lined like in parallel with one another, and they're combed, and it's just all beautifully flat like that, and it's a bit sleeker. Um, they can they, they have a series of processes that they can go through, because you can have semi-worsted as well, all things we talk about in there. Um, but essentially they're all li aligned like that and then they're twisted up on themselves and it creates quite a, str a strong yarn and it can have a little bit more uh, gloss to it than something that is woolen spun which is the other one where everything's I just imagine it's all swept up off the floor it's all higgledy piggledy and you just get this ball of yarn with all the ends going every which way and then you twist it it can't be twisted as tightly because it will be like rope and it will have all these little ends sticking out all over the show so it can be a little bit scratchier on your skin okay so that's there are two kinds so you hear heard that already in there um <clears throat> it said that tamer is made from historic wensley wensley dale wensley dale teeswater cotswold and black leicester long wool which were amongst the most distinctive british breeds tall and elegant with long lustrous ringlets of wavy fleece their fiber fiber is smooth and sleek with a distinctive silken sheen so they told us so much about how the yarn is going to behave it, it can have kind of a it has a great drape to it things that have a great drape don't have a fabulous amount of recovery uh, because they just want to just just kind of hang all over the place like that they don't really want to be all springy and highly strung they just want to be all lo long and if you imagine these sheep with these long beautiful ringlets that sort of wave in the wind that's what we're getting out of this yarn but they've got that they've got that I wrote down the proportions of it um oh here 18 percent tees water 18% Wensleydale, Leicester long wool that's 17% and Cotswold that's 17%. So these are all our just going to wander through with our long ringlets just looking amazing and a little bit glossy. That's all those sheep. But it doesn't it isn't 100%. There's still 30% unaccounted for. So they said that 30% is wool. It's just wool. But when you go back and you have a little look at the description here, they say um Oh, they tell you a little bit more about these soft um, yarns. Uh, we've selected only the finest. Oh, blah, blah, blah. there we go. They go. I'm going to go back. Sorry, I missed a bit. They said pure luster blend yarns may, may be rather lean and lack give. So we've added 30% Cornish mule to Tamar, helping the yarn retain that characteristic woolly bounce. So that's what we were just talking about. They just want to just relax. I don't know what that crazy noise is. They just want to relax and just kind of, you know, be all cool, slinking through uh, the paddock, whereas the other ones are like, boing, boing, I'm bringing a little bit of fun to the party. Um, due to the long fibre length, this, uh, hang on, I missed a bit. Uh, they've selected only the finest Cornish lambs fleece. So they're telling us it's going to be a little bit softer. So they're saying, okay, all right, I know we have to add a little bit of wool and it's going to be a little bit bouncy. And I know everyone's going to think that it's going to bring with it a little bit of coarseness. Okay, but guess what? We've just chosen the lambs. So they're going to be a bit softer. So although this has got a kind of a rustic look to it now, it's actually not scratchy. It's actually okay. Unless you're hyper, hyper sensitive to scratch, this is going to be great uh, for you. So it creates a yarn which is durable, yet velvet soft. Uh, due to the long fibre length, this yarn will get softer and softer with every wash. So th there's just so much that you can read into all of that. And when we start 
um, learning a little bit more about how the different fibers behave, then we can make an educated decision about how we want to swap it out. So when I was making um, this one again, for ginger snap, when I sort of took the essence of this, you know, the gingery, the reason I chose this yarn, I'll tell you first, is because the original I made was a lovely ginger uh, bread color Romney yarn. That was the very first yarn I chose. Romney yarn is a dual purpose sheep. Uh, the, it's a meat sheep, but also has uh, wool that you can use for um, spinning and for knitting. It isn't the softest yarn in the world, but it definitely has a lovely wooliness to it. And uh, to me, it had a, a similar sort of handle to this Tamar yarn. I think this is probably fractionally, this is softer overall, and it has much more sheen to it. But it was kind of, I was sort of in the similar ballpark when I went to make this one. So when I went to make Ginger Snap, which is its sister with this much smaller neck, similar um, pattern uh, for this one same sort of bands and everything I used the Truly Myrtle yarn which is uh, this is the Hope colorway this is the DK and it's on the Skeins Southlander so the same Skeins Southlander is wool it's wool it's a woolen yarn it's an old yarn it will vary a little bit uh, depending on what wool they able to get hold of and how long the the clippers and the different you know the different um uh, uh fibers the different wool fibers that go into it but essentially it's quite a robust yarn it's also a worsted spun remember that one like that where you twist it all together so it does have a i wouldn't call it a sheen but it has a, a little bit more of a um what's a what's a really moderate word for sheen um because of the because of the nature of the spin it just has it's not it's not flat it has a little bit to it but it's not totally flat like you would find with a woolen spun where it's much flatter just because all the uh, light bounces off all the different little tiny bits that are po poking out this is sleeker so it it looks a little just a little bit ever so slightly sheeny but not i wouldn't go i wouldn't say it's high sheen um, but it had that wooliness to it. It has the bounce to it. It is a thicker yarn. This is a, a thicker yarn. So it's all, I can get the same gauge, but the fabric for this one, because the yarn is 200 meters per 100 grams, uh, it's a denser fabric overall, which I really like, uh, but it is a little bit denser than this, the original one here, which just had a little bit more movement and uh, room in it in the, the gauge that I knitted it up as. Same gauge right? Luster. Yeah, luster. Thank you, Kim. That's probably a good word. A little bit, little bit of luster. Do it. Uh, so I made the choice to go for the wool aspect of it and the worsted spun aspect of it to, to really m mimic um, this yarn. It's never going to be a true match because I'm lo I've lost that real gloss and obviously... Um, yeah, semi-gloss, semi-gloss. We'll go for paint. That's a good idea. Um, I've lost that gl real gloss that this one has in this, but I've. it is a good match. It is a reasonable match. You get a similar feel to these two jumpers. I wanted to show you some different ones because the person that is choosing um, the new yarn for Ginger Snap, so those are all things to think about when you're going to choose the new yarns. Think about what the old one brought with it it may not just be the color you see it might be just the color you might say oh, I want, desperately want that color but it's not just the color and sometimes we can just go for color and then we absolutely balls it up with the wool because we haven't thought about the fibers in the wool or how the wool is going to behave and you're like this is a great color but flip this didn't work out so well because now it's down to my freaking knees or whatever because I just or I can't get gauge because something else is wrong. So it doesn't don't just look at color. That's um yeah the, you know that's the that's sort of a, a lovely extra when you're thinking about yarn. Uh, right. So then I was thinking, okay, well if you went for something like this, which is my maiden, uh, then this one is linen and 50% um, linen and then 50% wool and the, the wool is actually a Corydale Merino mix but it has a totally different look to it it's a lot more sweatshirty it's a lot more relaxed the linen is gives it that lovely color going through it's also a blacker yarn it's called Lioness uh, it has a um, reasonably tight twist to it so it's a worsted spun the same as um, we were already dealing with but it's quite different it's flat it's absolutely 
flat in texture. It, it, the linen just lose all that bounce that we got with the wool, with so much wool, 100% wool in the other ones. Uh, we've now replaced that with our flat drapey linen. So it gains in fluidity, but it loses in plumpness um, with the linen. So that was a choice, just to, if you've got to go for something with a bit of linen or silk or something like that in it. This one is similar. Um, this is actually my pearl jumper, but I wanted to show you the back because it's the same gauge as my, it's this get the same sort of gauge with it, similar, very similar gauge. It's the same yardage. And this one is a beautiful outlaw yarn. Um, it's no longer around. Um, what was it called? Nyx. It was called Nyx, N-Y-X. And it was a, from memory, it was a Polworth and silk blend. I know it has silk in it. And so um, it has, it's gained the sheen again. We've got the sheen back. That silk has brought it to life. It's also got the plumpness of the um, wool, but it absolutely does not have any wooliness to it. It just doesn't. There's not. There's really not much wooliness going on in this at all. It's very soft to touch. Uh, it drapes beautifully. The silk gives it, look at the ripple in it is lovely, but I've lost any sort of, um, you know, straight off the back of a sheep feel. I've lost that with this. This is very sleek yarn. It's also a worsted spun. So we're still in the realm of worsted spun. In fact, all the ones I'm showing you are worsted spun. A woolen spun is just going to really up the ante on the fuzziness of the yarn in that original. So that was when we added the silk to it. Just such a, such a difference. The crispness is glorious. So if you're wanting to really accentuate the crispness in the patterning and the um, hem uh, and on the cuffs and around the neck with the twisted rib then going for something like this will do that it really will do that look how those pat the pattern stands out in that it's glorious for that if you have really crappy tension and your knits and pearls are a little bit different or you make a few mistakes uh, you'll see every single mistake in this this is not forgiving when it comes to mistakes so that's something else to think about and then finally, satin. Yes, that's true. Well, I should get all the <laughs> matte satin. I should get all the paint chips out. Pat paint chips are actually really helpful when you're choosing colors. And then finally, I wanted to show you this one. Yeah, Pearl is a really great jumper. I'll just tell you that now. Pearl is a great jumper. Um, I'm tempted to make her up in a different yarn for myself. I actually, I think I want to make her in a different weight. I like a fingering, I think. Um, she looks so good on. She looks so good on. She has that gorgeous A-line shaping to her. And I know a lot of people love a bit of A-line shaping. And I'm thinking I might incorporate a little bit more of it into some of my garments. It looks so good because it sort of, she sort of hugs you and accentuates your fabulous boobs. And then she gives you a little bit of shape down your body. And ooh la la, I think she is a very, very good looking sweater when you put her on. Okay, and she has those nice little short sleeves, so that will give you a waist higher up, right? It, it, it kind of a double, it's a double whammy with your um, trying to create a bit of shaping because you get you get a line at, at, at your, you know, at a point where you're smaller across your middle. Oh, I think it's great. It's very good. These are all things we do talk about in Wardrobe Toolbox. Okay, this is the last thing. <clears throat> I've got that jolly frog again. Mm. Okay, so this is my double time cardigan. I used Alina's here, she's here watching. I use Fiber to Go Ziggy DK for this cardigan. I love, love this cardigan. Now, this is a really good example of how you can also get a little bit of luster, a little bit of that satin finish, uh, and a really fantastic st stitch definition. Check out those twisted rib cuffs with a 100% wool yarn. This is a superwash. Now, every other yarn I showed you just now was not Superwash. So Superwash adds another flavor to the mix. And this Superwash yarn, this is a pure Merino. So what do we know about Merino? It's soft. Um, it, it can be really tightly spun because the fibers are a reasonable length. Um, <clears throat> and it has, it, 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 it's a finer um, fiber. So it does, it can have a little bit of swing to it. <clears throat> and it definitely has that 
sheen going on but this is also superwash so not only will it have that lovely sleek appearance to it but um, the colors are knockout it picks up the colors so so well really bright intense colors and superwash yarn <clears throat> is, is um, a really good thing I've got a cough this is crazy too many frogs <coughs> right sorry about that um yes so you can get um without paying for the silk you could go for a superwash merino and a dk this is another standard dk so you'll get a tighter this will be because it's the 200 meters i think roughly it's about 200 meters it might be slightly less actually i think actually maybe it's slightly different isn't it uh, lynn it might be slightly finer dk from memory she might be able to remind me i didn't write that down the fight I did I quite like a reasonably um, firm gauge with these because I think they're warm and they just feel good but and I they last they last really well but uh, you could get if you're after high high stitch definition because you liked what we were getting with this pearl and you want to move away from the wooliness because you're like someone here who just said in the comments uh uh I cannot go for wool um, <clears throat> because so what do you say I can't do real wool I have to stick with soft sheep wool or merino then this would be a garment this would be a good choice for you because you, there's just no the, like itch and this yarn is just like that that's like an oxymoron that, that they don't work together that's very soft and lovely so you can see the kind of colors that you get in the superwash yarn they're just extraordinary so that hopefully gives you a general idea a general idea about <clears throat> about the kind of things to think about when we're going to sub out yarn and when we're going to swap when we when we can't get it or when pricing is you know close to two hundred dollars just even more than the yarn itself to get it to you this is going to happen more and more and more we're going to have we're already seeing a real shift in the yarn industry as companies are not surviving uh, the current economic climate so we're going to find that we've got yarn in our stash that we're desperate to use because we've stocked up but um we want to sub that out for something in a pattern because we don't want to be buying anymore or we just simply can't get hold of the yarn that we want or it's just the shipping is just prohibitive for us and we haven't got enough friends to get together to make that shipping worthwhile so uh or you just want to might want to support your local yarn shop and your local yarn shop supports local breeders or has a certain range of yarn and you think or your local dyers and you think actually I want to just really put back into my local community and use the yarn that's around me there are so many reasons why you might want to change your yarn and <clears throat> the kind of things we talk about over in Wardrip Toolbox you know so often we come back to yarn because there is so much to learn about yarn and I think the more we go over it the more you hear things that you need to hear and so you might have we, we do lessons and so you do a lesson about yarn and you'll hear some things and then you'll listen to it six months later and you'll think oh I missed that about it um, or maybe we just come at it from another direction and you think oh, okay now it's starting to I get it now it's starting to all come together for me uh, so that I can I can be a bit, little bit more intuitive about a skein of yarn given what I it, you know how information just sinks into you and you start to just be the information yourself okay um <clears throat> let's have a little look skeins eros could be a lovely substitute for the blacker yeah the skeins yarn is lovely so the thing about the eros that brings us another whole it's definitely fluffier you'll you'll lose um if you want to have a rustic look you'll lose that with the eros the eros is not rustic I wouldn't think um it's it it also has Oh, I mean amazing amazing drape that I, I Eros is a if you haven't tried Eros yet and you want to get some yarn uh, from Skeins it, it's um, at skeins.com the Eros yarn is absolutely beautiful it's a sport weight yarn I just made a jumper for it for wardrobe toolbox it's a good price and it's it's absolutely lovely it's warm it's a sport weight did I say that I, I love a sport weight anyway it's a good yarn but it folds uh, it it has it creases because it has um, eucalyptus fiber I think is it is the fiber that's in it I can't remember I think it's eucalyptus it has a plant-based fiber in it but not silk and so we're getting some of the benefit that we might have had with silk it's got a little bit of fluffiness from other things it's a lovely yarn it's really lovely uh, so it's different but yes you could sub, sub it out but you're just knowing what you're going to get when you do uh, Terry said I've put yarn in my cart from yam, yam, Yammer Yarn 
feeling very pleased with it to get it, but with a conversion rate from the US dollars plus the postage, it was going to be a ridiculous price. Yes, and I'm worried that we're going to see more of this. So A, stock up. B, um, I, 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 curate your stash. This is a, these are tools for you. It's all, it's all clothes that you're looking at or cushions or, you know, gifts, whatever. It's all, it is all important stuff. Uh, so curate, curate your stash and, um, and also I think look local and just look and see around and try and expand our horizons a little bit around what's near us and see if we can't use a bit more of that. That might help and go stash diving as well. Um, Beck says, made that for my daughter. Oh, oh, the other ginger one. Oh, so my gingerbread, the gingerbread was one of my first patterns, wasn't it? And did I not do the full size range? I might not have. Yeah, we can work that out now, though, I reckon, Beck. We can definitely work out how to adapt it from the other gingerbread one. Yeah, because the other, the ginger snap, that one has got full 15 sizes. We can definitely go from there. You don't, let's say it wasn't me and I wasn't thinking oh maybe I should go back and make the big one I don't know if I will um, but you have the skills from inside wardrobe toolbox to take this and make the neck wider we definitely can do that uh, I knit gingerbread and Albertine DK that is totally different Albertine is quite different um, I, in, a, in a similar color my daughter loves it soft and warm soft Albertine is so soft and it will have a lovely crisp um, well, it's soft finish. I wouldn't say crisp, actually, but the but the stitch definition will be perfect. It'll be delicious stitch definition, I imagine. Um, here's all our paints. Uh, pearl might be next. Yeah, it's a good one. Going to knit pearl in a merino of a cardigan that I unpulled. Oh, good idea, Tanya. That sounds nice. Uh, well, right. So Lynn says that the the uh, Ziggy DK is 215 so it's not dissimilar to what we had for the gingerbread which was 220 for 100 grams um, I don't remember the gauge I used for this one I just knitted until I found a fabric I liked and that is what I do recommend you do uh, I love this review on how yarn behaves yes I love the way the color works on the neck of your jumper libs that effect is really effective I hadn't noticed it before that'll be my mother um, maybe it's someone else who calls me libs um the color works on the neck of my jumper yes isn't it a very good jumper is it this one or is it another one anyway it might be this one this is a good one i love how wardrobe toolbox gives us the opportunity to take in information like bites of an apple and know that if i hear things more than once then it will be important stuff to take on board yes we go back over things and we have an opportunity to refresh stuff Often with the questions that come up, we can go back and we can talk about things again. I can redirect you back to material we've got. We can bring it up on the screen on a live thing and we can show you what it was. Um, and I I love, I, we have a session every month where, um, um, we have a session every month where everyone can bring their questions, question and answer session. There are actually more than one time a month we can do that, but uh, we also have our fit night or our refresh session. But you have always have the opportunity to send me questions and I can research them and pull out the pattern you're talking about and I can pull out the yarn you're talking about and I can think about how to make this work or how to fix the, what your problem. And then we can come back and because I can give you a good comprehensive answer, it's helpful to everybody that's listening. So you learn so much. Uh, I'm thinking about Reef for next summer. Where did you get the Quince & Co org organic linen from? Oh, flip. Where did I get that from? I've got some more. I've got pink. I must do another thing with it. Um, now, I don't remember. I either got it, I got it a long time ago, um, and I either got it from Skein Sisters in Australia. Oh, that's a good thought, actually. Skein Sisters in Australia has Quince & Co., um, I'll just write that down for myself because I want some um, Quince & Co. Skein Sisters, well they used to, and uh, or I think um, I may have ordered some online. I'm pretty sure I probably did order some online before the postage got so out of control because it was a long time ago. I'm, I mean, when did I release that? That was, it would be before 20, oh, when did I release that? I don't know, it would be in the last four to six years. I release that so yeah um but it's, it's you just have to do a search i think or I email them and say who else are your suppliers i know there was someone lupine i don't think does quince but i know that knit and stitch in auckland were talking about getting quince so i don't know what happened with that 
Oh, I think years ago Holland Road uh, had quince. I think. I think they did. Um, I don't remember. But I could have got it at Holland Road as well. That's possible. So you just have to hunt around. But you see, that's another good reason why it's a good idea to have a stash. So I've got some more of that um, Quince & Co. Sparrow. That's the yarn that I used for Reef. It's my little tank top. It's 100% linen. It's, it's an organic linen. I find linen much nicer to work on my hands than cotton and much easier to work. And I know you can get some lovely cottons. And in fact, if you're down in the Southern Hemisphere and you want lovely cottons, go and have a little look at um, Say Little Hen in Australia. Uh, Sarah has some beautiful, beautiful cottons, beautiful yarns. I'm actually looking at some on my table uh, that's not cotton. But um, she has some lovely cottons in there. So yeah, and Lupine does as well. Um, and I think there's another shop I was in recently on the North Shore, um, Wild and Woolly. She had some nice Rowan cottons and some other cottons too um, in there. So yeah, have a little look. But I do like the linen myself. All right, everybody, I'm going to fly. It's the last day to join Wardrobe Toolbox. Oh, Ribbon Rose. Oh my gosh, yes, I totally forgot. Ribbon Rose, their new shop, the one in Penrose. This is all for people in New Zealand, people, a lot of people in Auckland or just New Zealand. Uh, I've ordered a lot of yarn online from Ribbon Rose, but I was I went into their new shop on my birthday last year, and um, it was amazing. I'll tell you what else is amazing in that shop: the art supplies floor. Flip, you just won't leave without having stuff in your basket. I tell you, it's absolutely gorgeous. The notebooks, the paints, the pens upstairs is just a beautiful art supply department because I used to love Gordon Harris in Auckland I used to be, I mean I started going there as a teenager when I was at school so I went to school in Newmarket and so I walked down to Gordon Harris because I did art all the way through school and I was an you know a passionate artist and so I used to go down there and spend all my money from Georgie Pie that I earned uh, at Gordon Harris and um, it's but it's a long way for me to go now uh, into town so Ribbon Rose is sort of you know, not quite halfway, but it was a good, it was nice to know that it was there. It has a lot of similar stuff. But downstairs at Ribbon Rose, they have an amazingly large yarn area. And then they have the spinning, the spinning wheels. They have so, have all the Ashford wheels. If you have a chance to come to Auckland and you want to go and be ooh and ah at a bunch of beautiful things, go to Ribbon Rose. Okay, everybody, I am going to see you later. Um, Wardrobe Toolbox shuts today. Go to wardrobetoolbox.com. If you want to know about new patterns that are coming, if you want to know about stuff that's happening at Trudy Myrtle, if you want to hear my little tips and tricks about things, go and sign up to my mini mag. It's at trudymyrtle.com forward slash mini mag. Uh, and then you can grab uh, you'll just get a free little email in your inbox every week and you get special subscriber discounts and all stuff like that. Yes, Lynn, you're scared to go to Ribbon Rosie Art Supplies. <laughs> They're just out of this world. Beautiful. Okay, everybody, I'll catch you later. Um, I'll see you in Wardrobe Toolbox, you people that want to join. Be lovely to see you there on Monday. All right, bye.